Hey everyone, we are back, this time to play Final Vendetta, and by we of course I mean with me as always is Cory. Say hi Cory. Hey, how's it going guys? In case you don't know yet, we are two professional pixel artists and indie game developers, and we happen to be making a couple of game projects, one of them being a beat-em-up game. We're going to be discussing a lot of the uh, pixel art and game design uh, in order to make this easier for us. We also are going to cheat. Don't tell our moms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to cheat, just in case you do have the game and want to uh, be able to see the whole game without a lot of practice, because if you've seen other reviews, they'll let you know it's quite difficult. First, you have to go in the options and then you hold left and then you hold Y and B down. And that, oops, <laughs> it's very easy to accidentally uh, press up or down uh, while you're holding left or press one of the other buttons. So this might take a few tries. Right. Okay, here we go. There we go. So hold left, hold Y and B, and then press start while you're on options. And you'll be able to turn on infinite health. You can also turn on pixel perfect, which obviously gives you a letterbox border. All right, so let's get into the game. Uh, we're just going to start on level one. And here we go. All right. And they do plan on making uh, a port of this for Neo Geo, which they're already working on. So all of these graphics were made with that in mind. So this is presumably yeah. Neo Geo resolution and within those general color limitations and stuff like that. And it's really nice to see this very authentic, very Neo Geo style kind of intro training screen that you see in most of the beat-em-up games uh, or at least fighters uh, so here's the character select screen and i'm going to start with uh, this dude it would be nice if their names were there while you're selecting them yeah it's true uh, you don't kind of don't know who they are there he is yeah. duke so he's duke, yeah, right. aka this dude right i should also say i'm a huge streets of rage 2 fan and uh the beat-em-ups in general are my favorite genre uh, which is a big part of why we're making a beat-em-up game. And uh, we're teaming up with Pixel Glass and Enable Software to make that beat-em-up game. Not for Neo Geo, but for, uh, you know, we're targeting 16-bit systems like Classic Amiga and also, hopefully, eventually, uh, Mega Drive. So we're working within much, much more severe uh, memory limitations and color limitations than with the Neo Geo. But right. the emphasis is really just on gameplay and capturing and kind of hopefully augmenting the, uh, the nuance and complexity of Streets of Rage 2, which I thought was the pinnacle of where the genre had gone back in the day. Right. Yeah, and we do, you know, I think we played a Neo Geo game on here before, and we we're big fans of it you yeah. know like the prospect of uh doing a neo geo game eventually yes. might be awesome but uh right yeah. now you know our focus has been uh, yeah. on the games that we've we've been working on for a while so. yeah exactly so and uh yeah definitely uh, our game our beat em up is called metro siege and someday a kind of sequel or enhanced deluxe version for neo geo would be really cool uh, but we want to kind of show what could be done on the more modest 16-bit systems like Mega Drive. So it, it's going to be very hard to tell because we have infinite health, but the game, even on its normal setting, is very difficult. Uh, you'll hear that from almost every reviewer. And uh, one thing that which they are apparently fixing, they uh, listen to the feedback and they're working on a casual mode. So... Um, yeah but uh, but still uh most of the people that a lot of the people i should say that reviewed the game were hardcore beat em up fans like me and had played you know played the hell out of so many games in the genre so when you have basically uh, veteran players of this genre dying in level two <laughs> you know what i mean you might want to read hold on one second there's a life hidden here there we go yeah you know, just from a psychology standpoint, like, I would have suggested going with, um, uh, making normal mode actually beatable for a seasoned beat-em-up uh, player, and then let people 
for a higher challenge, turn on like a name of a mode that's going to stroke their ego and reward them for being a veteran. You know what I mean? Like right. call it hardcore or veteran or, or expert or something like that. Exactly. When someone that's been playing beat em ups for 20 years, literally has to switch it to easy mode to, <laughs> to beat the game. Uh, that's, I kind of always viewed this genre, you know, brawlers and beat em ups and stuff as, the more casual action game anyways like like it was the genre kind of for that i, I do understand that there can be a lot of nuance to the gameplay yeah. and you know hardcore fans and everything but right you know it wasn't like the like the fighting games where it was one-on-one -on -one, where it was right. like there was a much bigger set of moves and all like yeah. even more hardcore fan base so yeah. i i definitely understand what you mean by that uh it's it's not a genre that's typically uh, grounded in just being hyper difficult by default, you know? Right. So. And the other thing about it, too, it, it's not the AI, it's not the moves of the players uh, or the enemies or anything like that that makes it so difficult. They just decided to limit it to one set of three lives each and you're that's it. Like right. you can you can collect more lives, but you can't there are no continues. Uh, so there's the cheat and eventually the casual mode, which presumably is just going to give you more lives or something like that. Uh, or maybe introduce continues into it, I have no idea. Um, but speaking of moves, uh, there are quite a few here. It's divided into four buttons, which is quite atypical for beat-em-up games like that. That's much more common in, like you were talking about fighters, like a Street Fighter 2 or a Tekken or something like that. Um, so there is a pretty good variety of things you can do and you could learn to mix things out i even discovered there's some pretty nice canceling you could do move canceling out of one sequence into another like i just did it right there like if i double tap forward uh you'll do a a, a running move and then you could do from the running move you could do basically dash attacks um with either attack button and then, so that's the standard attack button dash move for Duke, or this guy, as I call him. Uh, but if you do it with the Y button instead, you'll do this somersault kick, and you could chain and um, break from one to the other. So you could dash forward, start your punch nice. attack, and then cancel right in. And the crazy thing is I could just keep button mashing this sequence, and you can air juggle enemies to death. So a, someone posted on social media, a player, they, they discovered you can really kind of break the difficulty of the game uh, by doing those sorts of things, which uh, did get the attention of Bitmap Bureau. I think it was on a tweet I saw it. And so hopefully they're going to address that too. But you saw that, like I just m rendered those two thugs helpless. This guy's too heavy, which is one of the ways hopefully they'll be able to address it more. That guy doesn't go up so high that you can keep juggling them like this. So you can see you can only do it once. Uh, also, with such a powerful move, you could just create a slightly longer recovery animation for the player. So we can't spam it so immediately. And that would yeah. also resolve that problem a lot too. But yeah, um, they decided, I guess I should talk about some of the difference between this... Uh, the game design in, in this game and the game we're working on, which is definitely much more directly influenced by, meaning Metro Siege is more directly influenced by Streets of Rage 2. Like I noticed in this game, you can't do the uh, nice uh, nuanced jump backward that you can do in the Streets of Rage games. In the Streets of Rage games, if you tap uh, jump and then after you're in the air, immediately after you're in the air, tap or hold back you're going to um, be able to jump backwards which is a really cool way to play with style and it's another way to kind of do footwork in the air gain distance from an enemy that might be charging in and kick that same enemy in the face as you're retreating backward so it can lead to some really nice looking uh, basically a counterattack just in the fact that you have built-in move sequences that could give you distance and then let you also attack while you're retreating. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, you cannot do that in um, 
in this game. Also in Streets of the Streets of Rage games, you cannot hit enemies while they're down, but I always love that in the games that you could do that in, the beat em up games. So Metro Siege has a lot of that. You can do that, the, the Y button, uh, which is kind of your second attack button. It does let you kick enemies while they're down, but in Metro Siege, uh, you can also do jump based moves and like knee drops and elbow drops while they're down, enemies are down. And the benefit of that, not only do you have more options to mix up your gameplay, but you can also, um, it, there's a risk versus reward aspect to it. Because if you jump in the air and you're doing an el elbow drop onto concrete or, um, or a knee drop and the enemy rolls out of the way, then you land, you slam on the cement and hurt yourself a little bit. And then you have a recovery animation. So you're open to attack at that moment as well. Right. So there's a lot more nuance and risk versus reward. Um, similarly, there's a block button. <laughs> yeah, good old barrels. Yeah, right. uh, in this game, there's a block button. Um, and so you simply hold B and you'll block. And it works, but you can see there's literally no visual feedback other than a tiny impact flash. Oops, was that you or me? Um, I don't know. All right. But... Uh, so you can block uh, in Metro Siege, and you can counterattack, um, which makes it a much more yeah, um, it's... integrated part of the gameplay. Uh, yeah, there's it is just kind of it just blocks for I guess when you need it. Yeah, and there's no follow up. But yeah. yeah, it's useful, but there's no like big visual feedback or reward for doing it well in the Metro Siege. Um, you can just block, which can save you from getting hit, but there's more of a visual feedback that you did block and it was successful. Uh, but there's a penalty for holding block too long, or, or several penalties, uh, or they can be penalties for holding block too long. So you can't just kind of tank up, so to speak. Um, but there's also a reward if you time it, so you do the block at the split second the enemy is about to attack you then you'll automatically do a counter attack that has a special animation it does bonus damage to the enemy and you get back a little of your magic meter so to speak or your special your super meter uh and gain back a little bit of health so again it's risk versus reward like it does take more skill to pull off a counter attack and you might end up getting yourself hit trying to do a well-timed counter attack but it's risk versus reward. If you need health back or need your super meter back, or if you've just gotten really skilled, then you're very willing and you can make that decision uh, to uh, to play with that style. Or it just allows you to play with a very different playing styles every time you play. You could decide to play very defensively or very uh, aggressively, and each way is perfectly valid, and you could switch it up. Like, sometimes, that's what I loved, I used to play so many beat-em-up games with my brother, and we'd come up with, we'd, like, we'd find our favorite moves that we would like to finish off enemies or finish off bosses with, like, maybe a headbutt, and we'd call it, like, the kiss of death, or, you know what I mean? It's like, no, no, I'm not gonna just drop kick the guy from afar, the easy way to beat him. Like, right. his, the final move that's gonna kill this guy is gonna be the kiss of death, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I used to do that all the time too. Uh, like when when a game is like one of your favorite games, and yeah. you replay it a bunch of times, you're you get creative, uh, you know, with uh, yeah. how you want to take it on. Yeah. yeah, and for me with a beat 'em up, that's a big part of the uh, the overall value and the replay value. It's not how many different levels they offer. Um, right. And that's another thing remind me to talk about after I'm done talking about this. But it's not it's not the content and the quantity of the content. How fun is it? And even more importantly, how long does it stay fun? And how many times do you want to replay it? And so going back to that point, I, I said, remind me if I forget, there have been quite a bit of criticism that this game is short. And on paper, it does sound short that it um, that there's only six levels. But actually, I think we're technically in like level three or something. I wasn't paying attention, but it's not that short. Every long play I watched or that I looked at um, is right around a half hour. And to me, that's like the perfect playing time for a game like this. So I would much rather have 
a game that stays really fun for the half hour every time you play it, even if you play it every day for a long time, than a game that takes you two and a half or four hours to beat at all, uh, but gets kind of redundant and like, you know what I mean? By the time you're halfway done, you're like, uh, I, I only want to keep playing it because I'll feel like I wasted the last hour of my life if I just quit right. now. Yeah. Um, so for games like this, to me, this is the perfect genre. That's the sweet spot, right around a half an hour. So yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, it's such a fast pace that uh, mm -hmm. you know, like when you're <laughs> when you're grinding through endless enemies. I think we, you know, it, we went through that with that uh, Neo Geo game we played. What was it, Sengoku Three? Yeah, um, it got long. That guy, that got really long. <laughs> you know, yeah. that was like an hour, uh, over an hour, or yeah. something. Of gameplay, hour and a half maybe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you lose that point where it's like they're running out of art, and uh, you're just fighting this guy a mindless grind forever. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I prefer the more quick experience. Yeah, and there are definitely ways to um, to give that extra content value, especially over the long run. Now that these days, almost every game on every platform. Uh, can get DLC or can be updated with extensions and stuff like that. There's ways to introduce more content in a way that doesn't prolong and force you to play for five hours in an action game that, you know, so many times a day, especially once you're an adult with a job and a family, you can't just <laughs> go, okay, oh, I have, two, I have four hours to play, so I'm going to play this game and actually enjoy playing it all the way through. And like it's not to me, it's not the kind of game that's as fun or as enjoyable if you break it up into these playing sessions where there's no victory, so to speak, right. at the end like of that you, play session. Like literally, if you took an action, get ready. Oh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's another one, and there's no warning exactly <laughs> where it's gonna come that I can tell. <laughs> yeah. So that it's for a game with no continues. <laughs> that to me is cheap. <laughs> Yeah, like the quality of this game is very good, and don't get me wrong, once you memorize the things, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Yeah. So, um, like, you really can mix things up it very little, well. It was a little too fast. Like you said, it needs yep. a, an indicator of... Yeah, it, it specifically... Or something. Exactly. Specifically, where do I need to dodge away from? Right. Like, yeah. a general warning arrow, and it happens so fast, it's too late by that point. Yeah. Like... Eventually, you're going to memorize, oh, there's definitely a safe place on the screen to go when that thing appears. But that's pure memorization. You have to take the loss and get hit several times before you... You know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. Why can't your character see that thing coming? Right. Look, like, yeah, look at that. To reemphasize what I was saying, or finish my yeah. point before, is like, if you took an action movie, though, right? Yeah. Like, one of these... You know, like you were saying, a vigilante movie or whatever. Yeah. And you cut out all of the drama scenes and all of the dialogue scenes that are setting up story and all that stuff. You would have that. You know, you would yeah. have about 30 minutes of, of yeah. just raw action. You know right. what I mean? Like in the movie. And yeah. that's why I think that's partly why that feels right. Because yeah. when people are doing this kind of action, they're just brawling and beating each other up. It would feel. It does feel odd when you see that go on. Yeah. You know, like it feels a bit unnatural when you see that yeah. going on for like hours or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, even in uh, the original, um, to get really nerdy, uh, in the anime series Berserk. Right. Like, right. there's a famous scene where Guts, uh, to protect Casca, is like has to fight off like a hundred soldiers on his own. Like they do a time fade. You know, it, it like. There's a fade and it shifts from day to night time and then like now there's a giant pile of bodies that he's fought off. Like right. they don't show you, they don't force you to watch uh, like, you know, five hours of him uh, killing everybody. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I, I, I must say from a pixel art point of view, uh, the thing I like best about this game is palette wise, they really captured the kind of mid-generation Neo Geo aesthetic as far as, I love how there are nice but slightly muted colors in the background and lower contrast, and then like very high contrast saturated sprites. Too much to be natural looking, 
but enough to have that old Neo Geo arcade feel and to have the characters really pop off of the background, even though, oh God, <laughs> even though the background is quite colorful on its own right. So yeah. they did a good job with the color balance and stuff. There's a lot of really smooth animations. Um, you know, I, I guess I can't just say only positive things. The, the one thing that bothers me a little bit about the art style, and it's a matter of personal taste, is the head to body ratio, the proportion of the, all the characters, especially some like this boss here. Right. Their heads are just slightly oversized enough to not be chibi and not quite be like a typical supposed to be kind of realistic or heroic video game proportion so it kind of makes it feel like you're controlling like 12 year olds that kind of look old <laughs> for their age yeah yeah i know what you mean like um it, it's if you if you've shrunk the heads by you know just a tiny amount like they would, yeah they would feel very natural and it, yeah. it just seems like you know it, it is a matter of preference and you know that kind of thing on either what you want to make or you know we're artists so we're really picky about those things but yeah exactly yeah i i, I agree with you it's it's like i want it to be one way or the other i guess yeah uh, as opposed to sort of that in between yeah but. and speaking of that um i i did also want to point out i can't remember who but one of the youtubers that had done a review uh, of uh final vendetta did mention that while everyone is keeps referencing Streets of Rage 2 and Final Fight as the influences for this game, there was a classic arcade game called Vendetta uh, that I looked at a long play. Uh, I know I played it a long Vendetta. time ago. V Vendetta, sorry. I have a bad habit of that. Jean-Claude Vendetta. Right. Um, but uh, the, the point is that... Um, where was I going? Yeah, so that game Vendetta, I noticed watching the long play that its characters had that slightly over uh, large head style and one of the selectable characters. Oh, that's a good point. Because of the cheat, we never have a chance to pick a new character. Right. And uh, there is the big wrestler guy, and one of the main selectable characters in Vendetta is a obviously Hulk Hogan based guy. But I have a feeling the actual game Vendetta had quite a bit of influence on this game's development and art style. Uh, so it's worth looking into. It's definitely hokey and feels very of the time. Man, is it 80s. But I really like, like, it's, to me, it's, um, like, in Metro Siege, I'm going with more of that um, wrestling, you know, the real WWF, not the World Wildlife <laughs> Fund or Federation or whatever they are. Um, you know, like, there's that bit of wrestling where, like, the ground, hitting enemies while they're down, the grabbing, the counter-attacking, all that stuff. Um, so that's like, Metro Siege is really going for, obviously being influenced by Streets of Rage 2 and Final Fight, but going back to the original influence for the whole genre of those uh, late 80s, early 90s vigilante movies. Going for a little more down-to-earth, but cinematic uh, kind of feeling. Uh, with the look and the storytelling and the game design, gameplay design. Really bright dither effect that bugs yeah. me a little bit there. But, um, yeah. I, yeah. I, know, I know on like on a CRT that would look pretty decent. Yeah, but how many people have a CRT right. these days? Yeah. Uh, and that is, the Neo Geo is completely incapable of translucent uh, effects. So, unlike, you know, things like the Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1. Um, so, I understood, I understand their decision for that, but yeah, that's a bit jarring on an LCD screen. I think it's just the contrast, because it's like a yeah. dark background, yeah. and uh, when you have a really bright color dither on top of that, it's, yeah. it can be a bit much. Overall, though, I'm really loving the color scheme and shading of this level. Yeah, yeah. Really uh, nice. The, the addition of like the plants and stuff uh, that, yeah. that I'll always rendered very nicely. Yeah, I mean, it's really beautiful. And like really nice choice of color and contrast level in that foreground. Oh yeah. Like it's not fighting for your attention, but when you look at it, it's beautiful. Absolutely. And great job with the uh, nice purple green. Um, yeah, we do a lot of videos, by the way, everyone of like 
playing classic games and having the similar discussions and kind of tips for how to ensure really nice contrast between the environment and the characters and important objects and all that kind of stuff. So if you find those kind of conversations interesting, then uh, we welcome you to watch some of our other videos find our conversation interesting nice little bit of uh, perspective fake perspective yeah. work and him jumping through the uh like the i guess it's like a cook window or something very nice yeah there's there's a lot of nice things going on here uh, yeah I, well the scrolling was a bit weird know, like despite what i said about that other yeah. dither like a yeah. lot of this environment dither's pretty decent like, tastefully done yeah 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 exactly and as everyone has mentioned, the soundtrack of the game is really nice. It fits really well. It's very nicely done. Yeah, I think the just also just the sound effects, the impacts, and everything that yeah. that, that all sounds really really great. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm loving those movie posters too. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. There's we have a similar thing that's going to be happening coincidentally in Metro Siege. Um, really nice muted single color family background that kitchen back there again it doesn't scream for your attention but when you look at it it's it's very nicely done absolutely yeah, yeah I'm really digging this environment. that gradient on that back wall from the orangey colors to the cool colors yep. all great stuff the only other thing that you know I don't want to get too about the art either but something about the way some of the characters walk and yeah awkward yeah. me a little bit it, it's like it's and i think the reason like it, the motion is is nice looking but yeah. it's something about the symmetry of it feels yeah. like people typically aren't you know like yeah. that perfect when they're walking and well i think that's what bugs me about especially it. this woman uh that's been throughout since level one just different colored versions Right. this woman here yeah. that it's not how a human woman is shaped in the hips and that's not how they walk right so that to me that was like the worst uh animated character in the whole game uh yeah. like it still looks nice overall but i still think this is a really nicely made game yeah you know, definitely it's, uh, it's just little you know we're gonna notice things <laughs> yeah Oh, another thing to point out, everyone, like, yeah, since we are kind of uh, being ne negatively about a few things, don't get us wrong, that doesn't mean we think, uh, oh, our game Metro Siege is superior or going to be in every way or anything. Right. We're making it for drastically weaker 16-bit systems, so we have to spend a lot of time optimizing. For example, like, you could see these insanely smooth animations of these Capoeira-style fighter women. Just their idle animation uses more memory, more graphic memory, than the entire animation set for one of the player characters in uh, Metro Siege. Yep. Like, that's an insane number of frames, and it's all full frame, entirely new graphics per frame. To get Metro Siege to fit in those much more humble 16-bit systems memory, with all the moves we gave it, we have to make every animation out of the same few body part images that we're just moving around, almost like paper cutout animation. And obviously try to do our best to hide it so you can't tell that's how it's animated. But um, it, it's a skill unto its own. You can't just animate based on what, like, what's the best way to make that particular move look really cool or really fluid. It's right. how can I make the move look with the body parts I have within the memory limitations that I have. You know, a lot of developers probably wouldn't uh, enjoy working within those uh, yeah. constraints or We're gluttons for punishment. But, yeah. you know, we, yeah, we, we enjoy it a lot. I think yeah. it's like, it, it adds an extra challenge that we, yeah. you know, we like problem solving and stuff like that. Yeah, and like to me, I like proving the point that it's all about the gameplay. Don't get me wrong, we're doing everything we can to make Metro Siege and our other game projects like Damon Claw look really good. Uh, but it's, I could tell it was going to blow up. That was nice communication to the player, the way the barrel after you punch it starts kind of heating up red and then blinking. That was nice. Right. Oh yeah, you can, um, there's a dodge move, double tap up or down and you'll dodge. Uh, that was also in Streets of Rage 3. But the, oh, yeah. Streets of Rage 3 had the silly roll up in a ball thing. Um, yeah, this looks more nice. This was a better decision, yeah. yeah.
But yeah, especially when you're like making really big hulking characters like this big construction-y looking guy and like really big bosses, the bigger you make their head, the more you're ruining, you're moving away from the proportions that make a big guy look good. It is a matter of style. I yeah, yeah, suppose. for sure. And I, I do know there there is something to be said, I suppose, about... Because a lot of people did this stuff back in the day because, you know, they're dealing with low resolution. They want to show some of the characters' face and head, so they, they did a yeah. little abstraction there to show it. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, TV screens back in the day, they weren't always so big. You know, yeah. like, you can... You can get bigger screens now for way cheaper than it was yeah. back then. A lot of people had little dinky TVs or monitors, or whatever. Right. Uh, so I, I can imagine, or even at the arcade. I mean, yeah, you were pretty close on the screen, but it wasn't always a huge screen. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, for like Neo Geo cabinets and stuff. So I can kind of see like how this style would work in that context better. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, I've got to say, throughout this entire game, the use of color in the environments is my favorite thing. Really beautifully done. Um, that previous environment with the uh, wind blowing and the kind of like... Not rainstorm, because there wasn't a ton of raindrops, but that blowy wind and leaves and raindrops and stuff, that was a really nice sense of atmosphere. And the, the lighting and co use of color in this uh, environment is really nice as well. Yeah, and... and just lots of variety through the levels like uh, you know we've, we've been yeah. through many different sorts of scenes with Very different true. types of textures and lighting and everything uh, a lot going on there yet it all feels cohesive so it's yeah. very nice yeah I've got to say too everyone we've not done we've done I, uh, less than half of the moves you can do so definitely like I said don't uh, don't take this video as like a um, a thorough playthrough or let's play or representative of how well you can play and what how much variety there is quite a bit of variety i, I just haven't played enough yet to, oh yeah so there's a back attack with the uh top two buttons um yeah and, and oh there we go like so we y and b do this about that other female character yeah um i by contrast i think the boxing female character was really well done you know what I don't yeah like yeah definitely really decent you know yeah the capoeira one was good too um absolutely yeah nice dramatic music for that but see yeah like uh like, I was worried when I heard, oh, the game is really short, six levels. Six levels does not mean six environments. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yep. this to me, if we reach the boss in the next ten minutes, it feels like five to ten minutes. It feels like a perfect length for a beat-em-up game. I agree. Yeah. And I, and I do think, you know, I suppose that's something that a lot of people... I understand like difficulty modes. Um, you don't want to change the game too much, but you can always yeah. like if you needed to add a lengthier portion of your game, you could always yeah. add that to a different mode or an extended story mode. Exactly. You know, there's ways around it. I, I like when the initial like default game though feels like too long. You know, it's yeah. Uh, that's that's always been an issue for me. I played. That, that's it's a common. Oh, watch thing out! For games. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> yep, definitely. Um, oh, yeah, one thing to point out. Um, as you, I'm sure you've noticed, air juggling is a huge part of the design of this gameplay. You don't have to do it, but especially if you're playing in the real uh, non-cheaty mode or non-casual mode they're going to make. If you have so few lives, you need to kill the enemies as fast as possible. I think this is the final boss. Nice. He's, I he's, like that wiggle yeah. on the helicopter to get yeah. it in motion without, you yeah. know. You're just really alternating the yeah. dither to make the, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, very nicely done. Whoa, suddenly a character with magic attacks. <laughs> you know, it, it, to me there's a big difference between when a character, like, you've got these flaming fists, but it's still... He's just punching them. They just made it look cool. You know what I mean? Right. To me, that for some reason is way more believable 
That was really nice. I, I attacked him and he landed on his feet. Look at that. He does nice. a backflip. Really nice. Nice touch. But in Streets of Rage 2, the final boss was named Mr. Big. Uh, I think, if I recall. This guy's named Mr. Big Head. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Very cool. A second second mode. I, I had a feeling. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's why it's Hamilton's pocket or something. <laughs> I don't know. Cool boss design. I'm liking it. Yeah, like really, the, this game, if if you do take the time, that's the thing, if you have the patience, like old school games, to keep trying and learning, or once they add the casual mode so you could practice more easily. The other funny thing is they have a training mode, but for some reason, which seems like an accident, you have to unlock the training mode, by I think, by beating the game, which largely defeats the purpose of a training mode. Um, but assuming they fix that at the very least with the casual mode, hopefully by also... Um, unlocking... Whoa, we lost a limb there. Oh, he's a robot? <laughs> I don't know. Why is that f leg flailing around on its own? That was... That was weird. So, I... Yeah, I, 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 yep. like, I do appreciate that um, they want to update the game and, you know, fix yeah. things for fans. That's always yeah. a nice... Um, yeah. You know... We, we've seen a lot of games delivered and that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah Ooh, how are they... Developers. How are they going to do this on the Neo Geo? They're going to have to retool this. You see the uh, semi-transparent ghosting of the frames? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not going to be able to do that. Oh, they can alter this portion, I guess, or just yeah, exactly. thing out. Yeah, or what they can do, what they used to do in old arcade systems with no transparency, just use a, an alternate sprite palette that just has a more muted version. Because the Neo Geo has so many alternate sprite palettes you can use. I forget how many, but it's an ungodly number. Right. Like in general, a sprite with 16 color. So like, let's say you design your character to be 16 color. You can make another cloned sprite of him behind himself that uses a different palette that looks more faded, even though it's not actually semi-transparent. And then again and again and again, each palette being more and more grayed out for this gray background. And it would look very similar to this. So yeah. I do like hopefully that, that's though, what they'll they do. They have a nice character display in their credits. Yeah, no, that was nice. Uh, th this game has uh, its class from beginning to end. Uh, it's really well done. I can tell even with cheating and having a conversation at the same time, there's a ton of nuance to the fighting that we didn't get into and more moves and stuff like that and a whole other character we didn't show. But yeah, so that's a final vendetta. Solid game. Yeah. If they fix it so people can build up the skill in a very fun and uh, not frustrating and not insulting way, it's a great game. I'm definitely glad I bought it. To me, the length was perfect. And there was plenty of uh, variety in the environments, too. Awesome. Yep. With, with that, I guess we'll end the video here. We hope it was enjoyable for everyone. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description and we'll see you soon.